We are on the line with Steve Mordu and Dave Cassioppo, and we are going to be talking about revving up your Microsoft PowerPoint or Microsoft Power Platform marketing with Rapid Start CRM and Influence. So, um, like I said earlier, please feel free to throw questions into the chat or into the um, Q and A. Please make sure that you're responding to all um, to everyone who's here, rather than just the panelists um, and the presenters. Um, my name is Monica Hoyer. I'm the Director of Marketing at Influence. I am going to throw things over to Steve and he can get us started with a brief intro um, about who he is and who um, Forceworks and Rapid Start are. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Monica. Uh, my name is Steve Mordu. I'm the CEO of Forceworks and Forceworks is the developer of Rapid Start. Uh, it's a solution we launched uh, originally in 2015. Uh, we've evolved that solution right along the way with uh, with advances in Microsoft's uh, Power Platform. It's a free CRM solution. And after uh, Dave introduced himself, I'm going to give you just a quick overview of what that thing looks like. Um, and we've got uh, we're, we're approaching 100,000 users of this solution now. And uh, I was very happy to uh, to run into uh, Influence and their solution. It seems like a perfect add-on for our users. It's something they've been asking for. Um, so I'm looking forward to this uh, webinar. Awesome. Dave, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and Influence? Oops. Sure. So uh, I am Dave Castillo, president and CEO of Influence. So we are two things. We are a digital marketing agency and we are a marketing automation technology provider. And so that's what we'll be focusing on here today, the marketing automation technology. So our tech stack does a whole bunch of great things. Um, one of the great things it does is connect to the Microsoft Dataverse. Um, and so we started off uh, building that connection um, and, and we're focused on the dynamics as an, op as an opportunity for a CRM. And then we discovered Rapid Start and said, this is great. Uh, we love what we see here. Um, and so we went to work uh, with Steve to figure out how we could do, bring our integration into this Rapid Start environment. And uh, the, the whole integration process went really, really smoothly for us. And I think the, the end result is something that um, raises the value of Rapid Start by adding some really advanced marketing automation technology to an already cool platform. Fantastic. Well, we are going to start today off with an introduction to Rapid Start if you're not familiar with that. And then um, Dave is going to do a demo to show what it looks like when you're in the system. So I'm going to stop talking, which I'm sure you guys are happy about. And I'm going to let Steve start talking and really diving into Rapid Start CRM and um, Forceworks. Over to you, Steve. Yep, let me pop this up. Uh, let me know when you're able to see my screen. We can see it. So uh, Rapid Start is a model-driven power app. It is built on top of Dataverse. Uh, Dynamics 365 is also a model-driven power app built on top of Dataverse. It's just a great big one. Uh, many customers struggle with the uh, complexities of that product. It's a very powerful and very complicated product. It is also pretty expensive for a lot of customers. And uh, so what Rapid Start does is it, we've built this much simpler sales and service CRM application on the platform next to Dynamics. Uh, we don't charge anything for Rapid Start. It runs on a $5 license uh, from Microsoft. So it's much more accessible. As you can see here, it basically includes four apps. There's a settings app for your power users. There's a full featured app. There's a sales only app or a service only app, which is really just subsets of the full featured app for people that just do sales or service. I'm gonna jump into the full featured app here. Um, essentially, if you're familiar with Dynamics 365, this is going to look very similar because, again, it's, it's a model-driven app on the Power Platform, just as theirs is. We've got the similar navigation down the left-hand side, a lot of similar capabilities here. Uh, the difference is we've built these capabilities instead of having them included from Microsoft. Uh, we can track all of our accounts. We can track all of our contacts, any sales opportunities, uh, incoming prospects, uh, and cases for uh, case management. Uh, all inside this, there's complete documentation here at a sidebar. This will take you to everything about how to use uh, Rapid Start. Uh, just looking at some of the record types so you can uh, get a feel here of, of how they look. Uh, again, very similar look and feel uh, to Dynamics, but made significantly simpler, cleaner, and easier. 
uh, looking across things like the top ribbon, uh, where in Dynamics there are, are many, many more options in there that lots of users don't understand. Uh, we built this quick steps capability here for you to very quickly add records uh, instead of having to fumble around and figure out how to do it. We've got a hashtagging system for you know Twitter, LinkedIn style hashtagging of records uh, for freeform categorization. Um, opportunities, prospects, all, all similar uh, look and feel of how these things work. And we've got a process across the top that you can follow to close these. Uh, and again, quick steps, buttons, everything that's, uh, that's needed for a simple CRM. The biggest value of Rapid Start is it really provides you with a, a data model on which to, to build because uh, Power Apps by itself really doesn't include anything until you build something. And for a lot of users, they just stop right there. So here they can go out and install Rapid Start for free from AppSource and have this entire data model uh, ready to go. Uh, and since it's built on Dataverse, it's completely customizable. You can keep building. We've got enterprise companies using this as applications to some of their departments. So it's a very robust thing. And a good example of how this thing can be customized is what David's going to show you with their Influence uh, solution, which is a customization that's been added to Rapid Start. So I'm going to turn it over to David. Awesome. Thank you. And I will switch over to sharing my screen here. And... All right, can everybody confirm that you can see my screen? Yeah, good. Excellent. So um, what you see here is the Influence Marketing Platform user interface essentially embedded into Rapid Start CRM. So there's some configuration, a little bit of setup work to do, but it is not incredibly complicated. It's, uh, it requires some credentials, basically. And you're, what you're going to do here is you're going to set up an application user. And so that does not take a user, a license seat. Um, so it's an application user that says this technology can connect to this technology. And so that's one of the nice advantages of how these two systems connect. But once it's connected, you're going to notice that your Rapid Start environment now has an influence section here with a link directly to the marketing platform and clicking that is essentially going to go out and load the entire platform uh, into this iframe where you can work directly within Rapid Start. Now, we are a freestanding SaaS platform. So if you choose to, you can work outside of Rapid Start as well. And your data is still going to be exchanging uh, between applications behind the scenes for you. Um, so that can create some real opportunities for, while well, I don't have to have necessarily one-to-one -one user licensing for, for, for my marketing technology uh, with, my, um, with my CRM as well, uh, but you can. So it's really, you're getting all kinds of great flexibility here. So um, within that, they, I'm gonna kind of walk through just a little bit of, of what does the setup look behind the scenes? So um, when, when we're connecting to the Dataverse, which is how we connect to Rapid Start, um, you need a few pieces of information, some keys really to say that Influence can talk to Rapid Start. And that's this uh, web API URL. That's just the URL you would navigate to to get to your Rapid Start environment. And then a tenant ID, and that's something that an admin on your team could get. But then you are basically going to decide which entities you want to connect to. So um, our technology will let you connect to literally any entity. And in this case, what it makes most sense for us to do is connect to the contact entity. Um, and then within that, we're going to map fields. And so this is our field mapping process. And we're just saying, what data do you want in Influence that you also want in CRM? And so um, we subscribe to a data minimization policy here. Or, or, um, we, our preference would be that you and your preference actually should be only store the data you need and the applications you need it in. So if you need the data to either run a query in the Influence Marketing Platform or to do personalization and messaging, put it in there. And if you don't need it, then don't put it in there. And so that's what's great about the system is that I can map the fields that I want mapped and, and leave off the fields that I don't. And if I change my mind later, I can undo a mapping and you don't have the data, data transferring back and forth. And so adding a new field mapping is just a matter of clicking a box. You can connect directly to the contact entity, but also to related entities. So um, what we've done here is that, and I'll show you this on a contact record is, we're bringing in on all the contacts who the owning user is, their full name and their email address. And that's gonna allow us to do some really great personalization for outbound messaging in that the marketing team can now send a message on behalf of every sales rep in their organization. So some really cool stuff that you can do there by bringing that data in. And then 
in terms of the uh, entity sync systems, which directions do you want your data going? Do you want it just coming from CRM and two influence? Um, some more settings here. So we're going to push some data back if you ask us to send it back to Rapid Start. So you don't have to. And so again, this is another one of the advantages of this being a separate system is that um, with some of the embedded systems that are available in, in, on the Dynamics platform, you're going to get a ton of data bloat. So let's just say you deploy a campaign to 100,000 email subscribers. You have now created 100,000 records for I sent an email. And then if you're going to also track whether they viewed or clicked or converted, if it's just views, say you get a 20% open rate, well, there's another 20,000 records that have been created in your environment. And so you're starting to hit some consumption questions here. Is that, do you wanna to continue to pay to have all that uh, data in your CRM environment? You don't have to because it's already in the influence environment but you certainly can. And so again, that's something that's we've made really flexible here is in, and very granular too. So sent messages, views, clicks, forwards, shares, bounces. Do you, do you want those data points in CRM? Are you gonna run queries in CRM or do something about that? Put it in there and that's, that's easy to do. And if you don't, don't put it in there because you've got it in our system already. So you can also uh, create landing pages in our system. And so yeah, landing page is a freestanding uh, web page that's out there that you typically associate with a campaign. So maybe you're running a, uh, some advertising, say, to promote add-ons for uh, Rapid Start. And so you've got some Google ads out there and you've got some display ads and things and you want people to click through to a landing page. They're going to fill out a form. That form is going to be generated from our system, but it can also pass the information directly over to Rapid Start. So then there are some UI elements uh, to our application. So um, you're looking at one of them right now. And so that's the embedded uh, experience of the entire marketing platform. But we can also embed our contact detail record. And I'm going to show you that here in a second. But that's basically the, it, the marketing information about each contact uh, within Rapid Start. So some configuration work to do there. A little, it's, it's, more, it's honestly more strategic than it is um, technical. It's a lot of pointing and clicking. It's really a matter of what data do I want in what system and, and how do I want the data to flow back and forth? That's a, that's a real strategy moment. Um, the configuration is pretty, pretty straightforward. So let's take a look real quick at a contact record. And so um, we're bringing over a few things here. So what I've done is I've, uh, in this model, you can determine whether, what data you want to sync from CRM to Influence. And so you can either just say sync it all, or you can create what we call a sync view. So essentially you're going to create a view uh, uh, um, within uh, Rapid Start that says, in this case, I put a, a custom field on the contact record that is sync to Influence, yes, no. And then I have a view that is built on a query that says sync to Influence, yes. And so that's my saved view. And in my configuration for Influence, it says, when you go to look to, to transfer data back and forth between systems, only look for the contacts that match this view. And again, a way for you to limit the amount of data that comes into your marketing technology stack. So the other piece that's here that you can see is a contact score. So we have a scoring model built into our system. And in fact, you can have up to five scoring models in our system. And so um, it, that can be based on all kinds of things. But for example, if someone has sent an email, it might be worth a point. If they open, it's worth a point. Um, if they click, it's worth three points. If they visit a landing page, it might be worth a point. If they fill out a form that shows some real intent, you might give them five points. You can also track this all the way through to website behavior. So if I send you an email, you click on the email, you go to the website. Each page you visit on the website could be worth a point. Um, or you could say, you know what, if someone gets to my pricing page, I want that to be worth 10 points because that's actually showing real buyer intent. So now, if I'm a sales team member and I'm looking at my contacts, I can get an engagement, a sense of engagement for those contacts. So this is my own contact record here, but you can see my contact score is 26 and the next person down is Chris here and he has a contact score of one and everybody else has nothing because I sent, set this account up yesterday. So, um, but as you send more content and get more engagement, these scores will go up. Um, and you can also put in here multiple contact scoring models. So that's what we do for our, our influence team is that we have a very near-term model that says, only show me the seven, the most recent seven days worth of data. And that's gonna show you who's very active right now. These are probably people you're on the phone talking to. If you're not, you should be because they are highly active. Um, we also have kind of a midterm model that looks at 60 days. And so those are some of our prospects that maybe we've been working for a while. And then we also track a long-term model 
that is 365 days. And typically what we see there is a lot of our current clients. Occasionally we will spot an outlier, someone who's you know, been out there looking at us for a long time, high contact score, they're engaging with lots of our content. And so having that information available to you and knowing that why, why isn't this person converting um, can start some internal conversations with your team to say, well, what can we do here? They clearly enjoy our content. They're engaged with us. What is it that we can do to, to flip the switch to get them to become an active client? So some great information there. And if we want to drill down again, if I'm like, wow, this David is really engaged. I'm going to go look at his contact record. And so here is that contact detail embedded into a tab on this form, right? So if I click this, it's going to show me the influence data within Rapid Start. And so here's our contact deal detail. This is what um, influence knows about David. And so it's probably a little bit less info than what we have in CRM because I don't necessarily need all that data here, right? So first name, a lot of standard fields, last name, title, um, have a list of custom fields as well. And so I mentioned earlier, we mapped over my assigned sales rep. And so now we know that Alan Rapp is the sales rep for David Cassiopo, and this is his email address. And I'm gonna use that and personalize it, uh, outgoing messages, but more data here. So I can be part of one or more groups. Um, and so groups and influence are really segments. So it could be a list of all people that are part of uh, my active client list. It could be everybody who's in the West region. It could be the right, you know, the, the East region. However you want to divide up individuals into groups, any individual can be part of one or many groups for segmenting. And that's how you do your targeting. So the next piece is the outgoing email campaign. So in this case, David's been sent me, I have been sent two email campaigns and they were both personalized with my first name here. So did I view those? Yes. Did I click? Yes. Now you see a list of all the emails I've been sent. We have SMS messaging built into our system as well. So here was a welcome message that went out. Again, it was personalized with my first name here. There's, you can see the variable structure there. And then here's the response, right? So um, you can see the full thread of communication. So even though I may send a bulk SMS message out to all of my active clients to say, hey, I wanna invite you to a VIP event. Um, I can come into the individual records and see who has responded to those, uh, those text messages. So landing pages. So um, again, you can create landing pages in our system. Has this individual visited any landing pages? In this case, yes, he's visited it twice. Um, surveys, so you can build surveys in our system as well. So we've got a customer satisfaction survey out and we can see that David started the survey yesterday and completed the survey yesterday. I um, mean, I could actually go to those survey results and see what did David uh, have to say. So website tracking, we're not gonna see any data here because this is not connected to our website, but um, if it was, you would see all of the pages that I have visited. Um, you'd see the sessions, see them broken up by session and you'd see duration per page. Um, so again, some really great insight if, as a sales rep for me to understand um, David's looking at us. What is he looking at? What does he appear to care about? He appears to care about marketing automation. Let's go talk to him about marketing automation or maybe he's more focused on services. So there's a complete timeline. So if I just want to see everything in terms of marketing contact and activity associated with David, I can scroll through this timeline. If I just, if I want to filter it by category to say, only show me certain pieces there, I can do that as well. And then looking at contact scores again, here we've got two models in this one. We've got a default score that's looking at 365 days and a seven day score that's looking at the last seven days. So the last little bit here is basically going to show us, um, it's really more for troubleshooting. So if something doesn't appear to be right, um, this is going to allow me to drill down and see what data has been passed back and forth between influence and, and uh, rapid start so that I can understand um, that the data is mapping the way I expect it to. So. Um, within all that, there's, I mean, so that's kind of the look of, of deep inside of, of what's happening in, in Rapid Start, but what can you do now that this, this technology stack is created? Well, I've kind of alluded to it by showing you that contact record detail, but this is our dashboard. And so it's designed really to give you a sense of how much power you have uh, when, you, when you connect these two systems. So I have in this, in this connection, I have 13 available email subscribers. One has suppressed. That means they hit the um, do not send uh, me email or, or unsubscribe me, or they were marked as do not send email in rapid start and that mapped over to influence. So if someone calls you and says, hey, stop it, I don't want any more email from you, you can just throw the flag in, in rapid start and that's going to sync back over to influence and mark that as suppressed. But 
We also monitor all of the common consumer domains like Gmail and Hotmail to say they have feedback loops. So if I send you an email to a Yahoo address and you say, this is spam or this is junk, well, I'm going to, uh, Influence is automatically going to process that data. Yahoo's going to report it back to us and we're going to mark that record as suppressed so that you don't send to someone who claims that you're a spammer again and in which you could do some reputation damage and have some issues with getting your email delivered. So we have three subscribers to our SMS campaign and these charts would just show us growth over time down here. A light integration with Google Analytics. So um, it's basically designed to show you web traffic as it relates to content that you've deployed from the Influence marketing platform. So as you deploy more email campaigns and social messages, you would expect to see a spike in traffic here. Um, you can create, deploy, and track on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter as well. So you can connect one or more of your accounts on those social channels. And by connecting those accounts, you can either just pull in the data, you can go to Facebook and post all day long if you want, or you can use our platform to create, deploy, and track those posts. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute. So all of those channels, and again, as many Facebook accounts as you want. So if you're someone who has a main corporate office and then um, a series of regional offices or locations or something where you have a different Facebook account for each location, you can connect them all to our system. So scrolling down a little bit more, it's a look at, again from the influence side, what does our contact scoring model look like? So these are our top contact scores here. And then we also roll that up by domain. And so what's really nice about this is if you are B2B and you were doing account-based marketing, you can now see by the domain name what companies are most engaged uh, with your content. So in this case, we've just been targeting one company influence. And so we can see there are three contacts that have engaged with a total score of 27 and an average score of nine. I'm going to you know, figure out what to do with that as a marketer because I'm probably going to go talk to the sales rep that's responsible for this company and say, hey, heads up, here are the contacts that are engaging with our content. Um, what are we going to do? What, how is our strategy going to change based on what we now know? So that is a quick look at the dashboard. Other kind of big areas to take a look at. The calendar is absolutely great for planning things. So let's say you were doing planning an event for a rapid start and an influence demo uh, or event or something like that. You can do that from the calendar easily. So you would start by just dragging out an event and it's a uh, rapid start influence demo. Give it a description if you want. What time does that start and stop? So we're gonna say that starts at one. and it ends at two. You can assign it to a campaign. And what's great about assigning things to campaigns is that you're gonna have automated, automatic reporting associated with that campaign. So for example, I could start a rapid start and influence demo campaign. And I'm just gonna copy that so we can do that. Um, create it right here. And now that's automatically added to that campaign. And so I can filter by that campaign and see all my content around that. So if I post that there, now I'm gonna promote this event and I'm gonna promote it through all the channels that I have available. So let's just say I wanna send a message out on Twitter. I'm gonna go out and I'm going to create a new message here. And we're gonna do that as our title. So tweet number one, and what account does it come from? And then what's my message? Um, how am I going to, what, what's my compelling language to drive, drive someone to this event? Um, you could include an image as well. Do I want to set a delivery time? Yes, I do in this case, or I could just send it right now. Um, and I can also assign that to that rapid start influence campaign as well. So if I save that and closed, um, there it is. And then I can easily take that and I can clone it over to other channels. So now I want that to go out on Facebook as well. I'm just going to copy it over probably change it a little bit here. First of all, it's not a, it's no longer a tweet, it's a Facebook post. Um, coming from the influence account, again, I probably change my language here to be channel appropriate. Um, save that and continue to do that over, um, let's just schedule that. Nope, leave that. Um, continue to do that across the rest of my channels, including email. Um, I'm going to show you the email compose process in another uh, section here, but there's quite a bit to it, but you could see how you could um, develop an entire campaign very easily through this calendar user interface. And we do have it presented as a timeline. So if you have a multi-month campaign, you can easily kind of scroll back and forth and see uh, all of the activities associated with this particular campaign. So 
Um, with that, let's take a, a quick look at um, composing a message. And I've got one drafted here. And so we're saying this is gonna be a personal invitation to an invite only event. Um, and we have a little process that we walk through when we create and deploy email campaigns. So you select the template, you compose, you preview tests, you define recipients, you have some delivery options. Um, you can send, set it up for an approval process if you want someone to approve it on your uh, team, and then you can deploy your message. So in this case, we're on the preview test step. I already composed this. We've got a really nice drag and drop editor that allows you to put the content together, but I kind of want you to see what it looks like after it's already been composed. So, so what you see here is that we've got a, a nice template built with the logo at the top. And then we're gonna use our variable here to say, if we know what the first name of this person is, we're gonna put it in the first name. And if we don't, we're gonna put in valued client and it says, you are invited. We've got some copy there, an RSVP link. And then we've got this thing that says content 01. And so watch what happens here when I type in uh, David at Influence to preview this email for David. So first of all, we see that the subject, subject line is personalized. David, please join us for an exclusive event. My uh, sales rep is Alan Rapp. So this is going to come from Alan to me. And then it says, David, you're invited. And then it's included in this case, I've got my own myself assigned here, but it would show Alan's signature file here if I had it set up correctly there. Um, and in, let's see if we can go to a different one here. Nope, try one more. Yeah, I think I forgot to update that. It would key off of that as a content block and it would show that David is my, or uh, Alan is David's rep and David is Alan's rep. Um, and so you can really create that dynamic content there. I can send a proof of this to anyone I want. So if I want Chris to see a copy of this, I just send a proof and I can personalize it and say, hey, Chris, here is the content that Alan's gonna get. Send that out to him and he can see it in his inbox and approve it or say, hey, you've got some edits that you need to make there. We also have a great tool for pre-flighting. So this is going to tell you um, what this email is going to look like in dozens of email client inboxes. And so um, if you've ever tried to compose HTML for email, it is very tricky. You have to use very basic email and it can, it can look different in every inbox out there. So we're going to give you a preview across, you know, dozens of desktop, mobile devices and web-based clients. I mean, you can drill down on all of those and see if your HTML looks good. In addition, we do some spam filter checking. We're checking for uh, proper authentication for DKIM and SPF. So all those results will come back and we'll kind of give you a sense of whether or not you're going to get into the inbox. Um, from there, we'll select our recipients. So define the groups that you want your message to go to. Delivery options are going to be, do I want to send this now or do I want to schedule it? You can throttle. Um, so what's nice about throttling is that if you have um, a large list, let's say you're sending to 100,000 subscribers, and you're gonna send them to a call center. The, the, the call to action is actually to call us for something. Your call center, unless it's a very big call center, is not gonna be happy if you send 100,000 messages all at once. So you can throttle that and say, I wanna send these messages out over the course of six hours. That will keep them from getting overwhelmed. Uh, but you can also just send them all at once right now if you intend to, and if you're driving them to a website instead, that's perfectly reasonable. Approval process, it would list uh, approvers here if there were any that are required. Um, and then you can actually send your campaign. So it's going to go back through and do some checking for us. And it's going to it's going to find a couple of issues. It's going to say, well, you have a from name that contains a variable. Are you sure that you have either a fallback variable, which we do in this case, or do you want to go see if you want to, you know, go put in first names for the people that are missing first names? And then here we didn't actually pick a group um, to send this to. So it's going to no one. So some some cross-checking before you actually send anything out. And that's really for us an important part of the whole pre-flight process is make sure everything's perfect before you deploy a campaign. Um, other big areas, and then I'll, I'll, I'll pause and, and uh, welcome some questions and things is our landing page generator. Um, again, another really cool tool. So um, lots of use cases for this, but you know, here's a look at a customer satisfaction survey. You can see here that we've got a process for this as well. You're gonna select a template. You're gonna compose a landing page. If there's a form on the landing page, it'll have a response page, have some basic settings, and then you can publish. And so, you know, here's this customer satisfaction survey. And again, it's all part of a drag and drop user interface where I can drag out different content types, including buttons and images and social links and form surveys, uh, video content, and embed that within my landing page and very quickly deploy a landing page. And, 
of note here is that this landing page has personalization in it. So if I'm driving traffic from an email campaign to this landing page and you click through from your email, I know who you are. So I can personalize the landing page experience as well. Um, and if I don't, again, I have a fallback variable there. So it says, hey, welcome, please take our customer satisfaction survey. But most likely it will say, David, please take our customer satisfaction survey. So um, lots of different ways that you can host these pages as well. So it can be on kind of a generic domain that we own. Don't really recommend that, but you can also create a subdomain of your web, of your URL. Um, so maybe it's more.mycompany.com or info.mycompany.com or survey. Point that back to the influence servers and you can create landing pages very quickly and deploy them. So um, great way to get some incredible information. Another use case for landing pages. Let's go back to these pages. I've got another sample set up here. And so um, this also works fantastically as a um, onboarding element for your own team. So let's say your organization is hiring new people at a regular pace and you would like to automate some of the communication to those individuals. Well, what I've done here is I've set up a landing page for the HR team to go in and fill out this information. I need first name, last name, title, email, phone, mobile number, city, state, zip, any data that I want to collect. And as soon as that, that gets added, I would also collect a start date. We're going to kick off a workflow and I'm going to show you our workflow tool here in just a second. But that workflow is going to say, the day this person starts, I want to send them an email to say, hey, welcome to the team. I'm also going to send them a text message that says, hey, welcome to the team. We're going to use text messaging for very important messaging. We're not going to bombard you with text messages, but when something's really important, you might get a text message from us. And so that can be carried out into a series of messages. So our internal one goes for the first five days you're on the job. You get a message a day, and then it waits for about 30 days and does a check-in and waits for another 30 days and does a check-in. And 90 days, you'll get a survey that says, how are things going? And so um, again, all of that stuff can easily be built within the system. And you know, the, the tactical execution, our goal here is tactical execution is the easy part. It's the strategy, the thinking through what you really want to do that really should require the, the brain power on your part. So Let's take a quick peek at the workflow tool and then I will pause for some questions. But um, here's this new employee onboarding workflow. Um, workflows can be associated with anything, but essentially we go to our canvas and you click out, click and drag out a landing page. You're gonna open that up and I'm gonna actually be able to build this landing page within this user experience right here. I'm gonna associate that with a group. That's my new employee group. Then they're immediately going to get this email or they're not going to immediately get it. It's going to be triggered based on their start date. Um, and then immediately after they get that email, an SMS message is going to go out. Then I could put a wait step that says wait for 24 hours or wait till the next day, deploy another email, wait for the next day, deploy another email. Um, you can make decisions in between. Um, we can have an exit condition. Let's just say somebody maybe starts and we discover very quickly that it's a bad hire. We could be looking for um, current employee yes, no field. And if the employee is suddenly a no, they're going to exit this workflow and no more communication will go to them. So you really have some really powerful tools built right within Rapid Start to take advantage of data. And the data, first party data is just incredibly crit uh, critical right now to any marketer. So I'm going to pause and stop my share and uh, we'll continue the conversation from there. Awesome. Hey, that Thank was you. really cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, I hadn't seen it myself all the way through like that. That is that is really cool. And you know, we, we have some customers that actually use Rapid Start for internal purposes, like HR, where uh, you know the contacts in the system are actually employees and they've built processes for stuff around that. And seeing this thing integrate right into that is I, I think I got some folks to be pretty interested right off the bat here. Well, <laughs> I, I hadn't, even thought about, hadn't even thought about, you know, onboarding and, and internal use for a marketing platform. It's, a, it's an interesting use case that hadn't occurred to me. Yeah, and, and it's really, a, I mean, it's a communication tool, right? Uh, you know, your social channels are, are going to also come into play on some level there is that, you know, we do this and a lot of other companies do this. When we hire somebody new, we also post it on social channels. Yeah. So we can have a post you know, coming out on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter saying, hey, welcome to the team, John or whoever, that goes out the same day we send the welcome to the team internal email to them. So it's waiting in their inbox and um, really a lot of stuff there. And then you, you uh, match that back up with what you can do with Rapid Start for just the processes, right? Yeah. The stuff that's not public, but uh, all of those processes and things you can build into 
uh, the dataverse and into rapid start and, and you really get some cool stuff going by getting these applications to work together. Oh, very exciting, very exciting. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, I, I just threw in the chat to let people know to, to um, throw, throw their questions in there for anything that they want to either dive deep into um, on the Influence platform or even on rapid start. So folks, you can um, throw those in there. Um, I know that one of the things that we discussed was, um, and uh, Scott, um, you mentioned this, or not Scott, Steve, you mentioned this um, when we were kind of doing some setup, the, the price you said for yours is $5 a user, is that correct? Yeah, and that's actually the price for the Microsoft license that they would need to run Rapid Start. It's called a Power Apps uh, per app license. It's available mm -hmm. from their uh, partner. Uh, any, they can contact any of their partners and ask them for these, uh, these licenses. It's a capacity type license. We've got some instructions on the site about how to go about getting them. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, we don't really engage in selling licenses. Um, so, uh, for us, uh, rep start users are completely free. They don't, they don't, we don't charge anything to anybody who's a user of rapid start. We do have some paid add-ons, mm -hmm. uh, and offer some paid services if they would like, but none of it is required. And, uh, I think that's why we have so many users. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Awesome. And um, we did have an, a uh, question come in. Um, and Dave, I think this is, this one's for you. How do you compare to HubSpot and constant contact? Yeah, that. Thank you for that question. That's a, a great question. So, um, our there's. I think part of that it looks like there's a little follow up on uh, licensing um, for Rapid Start and Influence. But let's talk first about how we compare to Constant Contact, and then we'll talk about HubSpot. So, um, typically we're looked at as as almost a graduation path. Constant Contact is a nice tool for sending basic email campaigns. Um, but if you really want to get into a marketing automation technology stack, you've got to go towards something like Influence or HubSpot, uh, Microsoft Marketing, something like that, where it does lots of things, not just send email campaigns. And, and uh, email is great. And it's it's one of the most powerful tools in our tool set. Um, it's far more powerful when you combine it with all of the other things. So um, we also have a, you know, sort of a different pricing structure than, than Constant Contact. Um, you know, it starts at a very low price point. It's entry level for a lot of folks that are just kind of playing around or exploring email. Uh, we're looking for typically a little bit more sophisticated marketer, ones that have a, an, a plan in place, goals, KPIs, things that they're targeting and uh, real metrics that they want to chase after. So when it comes to how we compare to HubSpot, and I invite you to go to a Captera or Software Advice or G2 Crowd and, and run a comparison on us to HubSpot, and, and you'll see that we line up very, very well. So um, pricing, we're going to come under the HubSpot price point in most cases. We're different in that we don't have an option from an embedded CRM, but we do play really nicely with things like Rapid Start CRM, right? So um, I, I think there's actually a big advantage in going that route because Rapid Start is endlessly configurable. Right. It can do anything you want it to do, um, whether you bring in Steve's team to help you do it or you do it yourself or find other resources for it. It's built on the dataverse. So you can do anything you want. And so what's great about this is that the marketing stack continues to get better and better and better. The influence marketing platform continues to get better and better and better while maintaining this connect, tight connection uh, to the dataverse for you. And again, also operates as a freestanding application. So um, lots of gives and takes uh, on tiny little feature sets where you would say, well, HubSpot has a this, and then you'd say, well, Eplos has this, and HubSpot does not you know, give and take there. But um, for the most part, I think if you look at the comparison of the two applications, you're going to find out that uh, we stack up very, very well. Yeah. Um, and so the second part to that question was um, more information around the license for Rapid Start and Influence. Yes, yeah, Steve covered, I think, the, the rapid start licensing. You can sign up for free. You just have to have the Microsoft licensing portion covered there. Um, the, the pricing model for Influence starts out at $700 a month, and it's a consume-all-you-want model. So you can send as many emails as you want. You don't have to worry about data consumption on the Influence side. Um, send lots of email, host lots of landing pages, send out, you know, lots of surveys, social posts, all that stuff. Use it all you want. Um, and it's based on the total number of active contacts you store in our system. So we do have a pricing calculator on our website where you can say, I have this many contacts and see what your mon monthly subscription fee is there. The only way, the only place where we vary from that a little bit is 
for SMS. So text messaging, we have carrier costs and we have to pass those costs along. Um, so those, those would be factored outside of that flat pricing. And the pricing has some tiers there. Like I said, there's a calculator on the website where you can figure it out. But the, the starting price of print is uh, $700 a month. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, and then kind of diving into that part of that, um, that charge is we have a setup fee and it comes with technical support. So we, we train your entire team um, as soon as you sign up and we have a two week training period, but then we're, we have, um, we have support. So if you hit any snags, you contact us and, and we'll help you through work through any of those snags. And our support team is, absolutely amazing um highly responsive and um actually better the response faster than industry average so um definitely have a lot of support there for for users and um, we do have some youtube videos and um feel free to contact us and and send us a note and we can kind of walk through a little bit more of that what that offering yep. looks like yeah, and there's a support website as well. Um, we also have a full API, um, so that documentation is available. So if you want to do coding against our technology, so if you have a commerce engine or something like that where you want to be triggering messages, um, we do have that flexibility, that capability as well to connect to our system and uh, to send webhooks out as well uh, to update uh, third-party systems as well as a Zapier integration. So for, for really quick uh, integrations, if you're just trying to connect us to an Eventbrite or something like that, um, Zapier is out there and, and you can easily connect to literally thousands of apps through that uh, and a WordPress plugin uh, for those using WordPress as well. Cool. And on the Rapid Start side, we've got a, a free forum uh, for support, user supported, but we're also active in there answering questions for free. Uh, and we have paid support options for people that, uh, you know, want more help or more personalized help. Fantastic. Awesome. Um, what other questions are out there? Is there anything else, um, Steve and, and Dave, that you wanted to um, touch on? I'm still absorbing. I thought this was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you've got a, it, we've got a great environment for us to connect to. So we were, like I said, once we once we saw what you had, connecting to it was kind of a, a, a no brainer for us. Um, see, we did have another question come in: Is uh, Rapid Start the best best platform to use first? So um, I would answer that in a couple couple of contexts. If you're just starting out with the CRM, I think it's a fantastic option for you um, because you can start out with it and customize the heck out of it. But if you, the, I think the question might have been, should I start with Influence or should I start with Rapid Start? Um, you can choose. And so what's great about that, again, is that um, we have customers that have been running our technology for a long time for years um, who then adapt to another um, dataverse model of some kind, whether it's Dynamics or hopefully in the future, some Rapid Start customers as well, since this is a new relationship for us. But um, that data is, is still going to connect and it can still pass back and forth. So you can start in either place and you can actually start both at the same time and connect them later. Uh, so I think it's really more about what makes sense for you as an individual. Where do you really want to start um, and, and choose from there? But there's, I don't think you have to choose one first. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, it's kind of when somebody mentioned the HubSpot and it's kind of similar where they've got their marketing platform and they also have their their bolt on CRM. So mm -hmm. I think uh, some customers start with their free CRM and then move to marketing. Some people start with marketing and then realize maybe they want a place to put all these leads for, you know, uh, building opportunities or turning them into customers. So I think a marketing solution and some kind of a CRM go hand in hand very well. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the typical CRM is not necessarily made for outbound uh, marketing. And, you know, typical marketing platform is not really designed as a CRM system for, for beyond that. So I think anybody looking at any marketing or CRM platform should probably be looking at both hand in hand. Yeah. But to your point, where you start, eh, dealer's choice. Yeah. yeah, it probably also depends on your goals and what you're looking to achieve um, immediately. And so um, what, whatever that is, that might dictate where you want to start. For sure. Wonderful. Um, wonderful. We've gotten some lots of thank yeah. yous. Thanks, May the God. force works be with you. 
Yes. <laughs> I know, Scott. It's Star still... Wars Day, Scott. <laughs> May the Force Works be with you too. Um, doesn't look like any other questions are coming in, but I want to let the audience know that if you do have questions after we wrap up here, please feel free to contact us, um, reach out to Influence um, or Rapid Start CRM and, and ask us questions. Feel free to link, find us on LinkedIn. We're all there. We're all active on, on that channel as well. So we um, welcome your comments, questions, concerns. We can connect you with people if we can't answer your question. So um, thank you everyone who's attended. We appreciate your time um, uh, joining us today and we will see you on our next webinar. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks everybody.